In this second part of the All About Text tutorial series, we'll mostly talk about attaching text to shapes and paths. Please watch part 1 first, so you can follow along. Shapes, paths, and texts, are by default vector objects. As such, they share some common properties, but they also have their own specialized features. Here we can see three vector objects, a text, a shape, and a path, each on its own vector layer, in the Layers palette. By right-clicking on a vector object and selecting Properties from the context menu, we can configure its stroke and its fill parameters, along with a few more. All vector objects come with these properties, which are of course adjustable separately for each object. Note that the context menu of layers themselves, do not include a Properties command. It's available only in the context menu of the objects they contain. Note also that the edit text command is not available for non-text objects. It makes perfect sense. OK, now let me talk a little about the relation between the materials palette and the stroke and fill properties of vector objects. In part 1 of the series, we saw that the fill and the stroke color swatches located at the text options toolbar, correspond to the background and the foreground color swatches of the materials palette. They also correspond to the color swatches shown inside the properties dialog of the text object. The difference is that changes inside the dialog, are applied to the whole object. In fact, when we are in text edit mode, the properties dialog is not even available. Hence we cannot use it for selectively change targeted pieces of text. That's because the properties dialog is also used for non-text objects, and of course those do not have an edit text mode. Now something else. Let me switch to a non-text object, like the ellipse over here. I'm activating the pick tool, since the text tool doesn't make sense for this shape. Look what happens when I turn off the fill color. The shape looks just fine, no fill color, and the background color in the materials palette changed to this not available kind of icon. However, now it does not let me change the fill color of my shape. I click on the swatch and nothing happens. I can bring it back by using the dialog again, but frankly I can also do it directly from the materials palette. These three little icons below the color swatch, control the current color, texture, and transparency. Texture and transparency are on and off, switches. Right now transparency is turned off, hence the not available icon shown in the swatch. Once I click on that icon, the fill color comes back. Similarly, I can also turn off and on, the stroke from here. The same principles apply to text objects, even when using the text tool instead of the pick tool. If you wonder why nothing happens when you adjust the stroke width from the options toolbar, make sure that the foreground color swatch is not accidentally set to transparent, in the materials palette. The pick tool can be used for moving and transforming any vector object, including texts. To reposition an object, we grab it from the handle in the middle, and move it around. To rotate it, we can use either the second handle in the middle, or the handles in the corners. When using the corners, the mouse should be placed just a little away from the handle. The handles on the sides can be used for stretching the object, while the corner handles can be used for scaling. By holding down the control key while scaling, we change the perspective of the object. To shear the object, we can hold down the shift key instead. We can also move the grabbed handle freely, by holding down both shift and control at the same time. 
If you are not familiar with the pick tool, please take some time to practice with it. It will really help you follow along. Now let me quickly hide the text and the path objects, and move the ellipse at the top of the stack. We are going to attach some text to it. The vector layer of the ellipse is currently the active layer, so the new text will be created inside that layer. If we want the text on a new layer, we can create a new vector layer first, then create the text. Either way, we can attach the text to the shape, so we use the ellipses layer for now. With the text tool active, notice how the mouse cursor changes, depending on its location compared to the ellipse. Outside the ellipse, it shows our familiar icon, meaning that the text will not get attached to the shape. Inside the ellipse, it shows the T letter enclosed in brackets, meaning that the new text will be wrapped inside the shape. When hovering it over the ellipse stroke, it shows a curve below the T letter. This means that the text will get attached to the outline of the ellipse. Let's start with wrapping the text inside our shape. As usual, we can set the text attributes using the text options toolbar. I'll define some of them now, and change them later as needed. Once I click inside the shape, PSP creates the text object, and attaches it to the ellipse, in wrap mode. This means that the text gets wrapped horizontally inside the ellipse, as we type. However, it will overflow vertically, if the text gets too long. Of course we can readjust for example the font size and the line spacing, to fix the overflow. Let me make the text a little more readable, and add a few more words. Ok, good. The text now follows any transformations we make to the ellipse. For example, switching to the pick tool and changing the size, or the shape of the ellipse, will cause the text to get auto-adjusted. Similarly, the inner alignment of the text itself, is now bound to the ellipse. Furthermore, the justify and force justify options, are now functional. By the way, force justify includes the last line, while justify does not. I should note that these two options do not always work as expected. Sometimes their behavior is totally unpredictable, especially with long or oversized texts. Okay, let me quickly reshape a bit our little bubble text. There's one more thing you should know. Wrapped text objects cannot be moved or transformed independently to their shape. Instead, we move or transform the shape itself. Alternatively, we can move or transform the whole layer. Earlier, I said that a text can be attached to a shape, even if it is created on a new layer. Let me quickly demonstrate that too. First I'm copying this text to the clipboard, so I don't have to retype it. Once in edit mode, we can select the whole thing either by dragging the mouse, or by simply pressing Ctrl and A, on the keyboard. Right click, copy, and we are done. Just to be safe, let me also paste it into notepad. Like so. I can now delete the text object from the layer, and create a new vector layer for it. Good. With the text tool active, we simply click anywhere inside the ellipse. The text is created on its own layer, and it gets attached to the ellipse. All we have to do is to paste back the contents, and format it. There we go. Once again, the attached text cannot be moved individually. Instead we can move the ellipse. 
If we liked the previous setup better, we can move the text onto the same layer with the ellipse, by simply dragging it in the layers palette. Since its layer is now empty, we can delete it. Mission accomplished. Text can also get wrapped inside plane selection. Once we have a selection, we can either create a new vector layer to host the text, or use an existing layer. I'm creating a new one. Once again, the mouse cursor changes, when we move it inside the selection, so we know that wrapping will take place. We can now type in the text inside the selection, and format it, at will. When done, we clear the marching ants. And here we have it. Text wrapping also works with irregular shaped selections, or true shapes for that matter. Let me quickly make an irregular selection, with the freehand selection tool, and wrap some text into it. I'm still using the same vector layer. There it is. Two texts on the same layer, wrapped using two different selections. OK, let me now delete these texts, and show you how we can use that feature, to wrap text around anything we want. I want to wrap a whole lot of text around the main character, so first I have to select her. Feel free to use any of your favorite selection tools, we don't have to be super precise anyway. I'm using the smart selection brush for this one, but I'm speeding up the video, so you don't get bored. Here she is. But we want the text around her. Not on her. So we simply invert the selection. Now the selection contains everything, except for our model. We create a new vector layer for the text. We switch to the text tool and click inside the selection, and we're ready to type in. The goal is to repeat the same phrase, over and over, on the whole canvas. To save ourselves some serious typing, we can type in the phrase once, then copy and paste it multiple times. The keyboard shortcuts are ideal for this. Ctrl and C for copying, Ctrl and V for pasting. Good, we can now apply the change, and clear the marching ants. To make it a little bit more interesting, we can also change the blend mode of the text layer, to soft light. Feel free to also experiment with other blend modes. Much better, but I think the font size is too big. No problem, we can always readjust our text. Despite not having the marching ants anymore, the text stays bound to the initial selection. Even after typing more phrases into it. In part 3, We'll see how we can create shapes and paths, and how to attach texts to their outline. This concludes today's tutorial. Thank you for watching.